This is what your thief looks like right now, but after this video, he'll look like this. Welcome to the ultimate early game thief vocation guide that will set up you and your pawn well into the late game of Dragon's Dogma 2. The thief vocation has one of the most powerful hidden skills in the game, which allows you to become completely untargetable. It makes you nigh on invincible since nothing can hit you. But this video progression guide is going to go over the following things. I'll show you the best weapons, armor sets and ring locations to get early step by step as you progress through the game. But do pay close attention because one of them is missable. I'll also show you how to unlock all of the secret thieves skills for yourself and your pawn. And finally we'll go over the best skill upgrades and smithing improvements for your weapons. Everything is timestamped below, so it's really easy to follow. So starting out in character creation, and don't worry, you can change your character's appearance at any time for free. And if you don't know how to do that, check out the guide below. But our character's appearance actually affects their stats in three different ways. Firstly, the taller your character is, the faster they can run. The smaller they are, the faster your stamina regeneration will be. And if your character is heavy, they can also carry more. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of stamina regeneration just to give you an idea between a small character versus a tall character. Ideally, a smaller character is always going to be better for a thief. But I personally went for a tall looking character and I did not regret my choice. Next, we're gonna be getting the best starting gear and skills in the game. After the first few hours of following the main quest, you will end up in the city of Vernworth. You cannot miss this location. So from the city of Vernworth, you're going to head out of the northeastern gates and follow this road up and along across the river. And then you're gonna head eastwards and just continue following this road past the first bridge to the second bridge right next to this campsite just here on the map. You can see the campsite behind me. I'm on the road and this is the stone bridge that you're going to want to cross. So from the campsite, cross over this bridge and continue along this path all the way to the east. And eventually you'll see this path up the hill, which leads you to a campsite and a rift stone. From the road, you can just head up these steps here and you'll see the fire of the campsite. Now, once you actually get here, you'll see a chest near the broken tents. If you go ahead and loot this chest, you'll get the lupine cape. Most capes don't really provide any defense, so it's more of a rule of cool and personal preference as to which cape you want to wear, and this one has a wolf head on it. And we'll be getting a matching helmet in a moment. Now from that campsite we just looted, if you continue north up this path, you'll come to this big block, which is actually a ruin. You'll eventually come to this ruin right here, as you can see, and once you go inside, if you actually kill the bandits, and run up the stairs here, you will then find a chest just to the right. Here you can get the stilettos, but don't worry, we'll be getting much better daggers in a moment. And then if you climb up on this roof and hop over here to the very top of the ruin, you'll find another chest on top. Here you can find the third greaves. And again, we'll be replacing these with better trousers in a moment. And then you can go down this ladder here into a hidden area in the ruin, smash these boxes and drop down this ladder. And if you come down into this basement here, smash through these boxes, there's a hidden area where you can find another 3,600 gold. We will need that money later. Now from the ruin, if you go across this bridge and up around here to this tower, you can actually find a hidden armor piece just here. So you can see that's the tower there. There's some explosive arrows up there if you're interested. But if you turn around, you'll see this slight ruined area. And just to the right of this, you can jump over here to these old ruins and then you can hop up the side here and you can climb up this ledge like this and open this treasure chest. That will net you with the chain mail. That will net you with the chain mail, but don't worry, we're gonna replace it in a moment. Now, if we actually go back to that campsite I showed you guys earlier and then go directly east of it, just down here, you'll find another campsite. And then from here, we're gonna go south across the river. So that's the campsite just there, hidden away in the trees. And the, the river is much more obvious just down the hill here. So we're gonna cross over this river. And if you look to the top right up that cliff, that's the house we basically want to loot. So we're gonna go around here. We can just ignore these bandits unless you want to kill them. Come up the cliff and inside this house, there's a chest you can loot right here. That's where you're gonna find the Prowler Kerchief Disguise. And you can actually wear this with other helmets, which is pretty cool. So now we're finally going to go to the Nameless Village, which is located all the way in the east corner of the map just here. So to get there, you're going to want to come from Vernworth out the northeast gate 
follow the path along to the east here. And then if you go across this first bridge going across the river, you can then head all the way around this path here until you reach the bridge. And now we're going to cross over this bridge. We're going to go to the campsite just off the road here. And then we're going to go through the eastern forest. And then to the northeast, we can go for a valley here that will lead us to the Nameless Village because this road is actually blocked. So this is the bridge I told you about across the river, which is our starting point. And now right ahead, as you cross that bridge, you're going to see the campsite right in front of you. But to the right, if you follow this path here, you can go through these rocks here. You can go through the rocks and to the right and you'll come out in this big open area. Now if you go to the left and carry on through this little forest, you will actually find a Minotaur enemy here, but you can just ignore it completely at this level and you can work your way up these cliffs at the back. They're the only climbable cliffs in the area, so they're pretty easy not to miss. And if you head through this rocky valley, you'll come out right here at the Nameless Village. Now if you carry on going straight up the path of the village, just to the left hand side here, you'll find the Nameless Apothecary. Now, if you go and talk to this character, he'll sell you a bunch of thieves gear. For example, the Bardish Daggers, but do not buy these. We're going to get them for free in a moment. He also sells the Howling Hood, which we'll get for free later. One item that is worth buying, however, is the Ring of Tenacity for 3,000 gold. This gives you plus 90 stamina to your character, and on a Thief build, it is incredibly useful. You can actually double up on this ring for more stamina, but I'd recommend just buying one. He will also sell the Rampart Breaker, which is this really cool leather gambeson looking outfit. This is actually the best Thief armor we can get until much later on in the game, but it does cost 22,500 gold. Now, I have already released videos that show you how to get 20,000 gold in a secret vault which can be done very early on in the game. Compared to the chainmail armor we already have it is much lighter and has double the defense and magic defense. So after you're done buying items at the apothecary you can then go up to the north all the way here on the map to the old noble manor. This is where we're going to find the secret thieves guild and unlock a bunch of cool skills. Head on inside the grandstone building and by the fireplace you'll meet Flawed who will congratulate you for reaching the manor house. After talking to him, he will give you the Legends Opus, which is a secret thief vocation skill scroll you can use to teach yourself and your pawn the Blades of the Pyre skill. It's a bit of a weird one. It ignites your blades on fire, causing them to explode, sending everybody flying, but at the cost of also setting yourself on fire. It is a very situational skill at best. But the most important part is the missable secret once you leave the manor. Now if you come back outside and go to the left, you'll actually find there's a secret underground entrance. And if we come down the ladder here, you will find a hidden assault course. And using these balancing levers, we can literally just run across them, kind of waiting on one, waiting on the bottom bit here for it to leave, for gravity to lift the other side up, and then we can run across and to the other side. If we then kick down the ladder, we can easily get back here later. Now, it can be a lot easier in this next room if you take out these leeches because they're really annoying. After the leeches are dead, you can easily do the challenge. So just go ahead and run and jump onto the first one and then run and jump onto the left one here. Make sure you lean it back a bit before jumping on this one to the right. And then finally, we have to time it so we can get across and we just made it there. Carry on further down the tunnel and you'll reach a door. If you open this door, you'll find the Secret Thieves Guild. You made it after all. Now going to teach us another skill and reward us with tons of loot. But firstly, if we read the Pilferer's Handbook that he just gave us, we can unlock the Secret Thief vocation skill, Formless Faint. This is an active ability that makes you automatically dodge any attack, range, melee, big boss attacks, everything. It essentially makes you completely invincible and unable to be hit, even when reviving companions. It's probably one of the most overpowered skills in the entire game. When active, it will consume your stamina. So if you run out of stamina, you're then extremely vulnerable. So make sure you use it wisely by toggling it on and off. Now, if you use Blades of the Pyre, you obviously take damage and it sets you on fire and you rely on a mage to come and heal you. However, if we activate Formless Faint and then we use Blades of the Pyre, we actually dodge the explosion so we don't get set on fire or take any damage. 
And you can actually constantly spam Blades of the Pyre to set your weapons on fire. Well, these ones don't set on fire. They ha they do permanent shock damage. So it's a really good way of getting damage and dealing the explosion effect. As for all the loot, there is a location in the next room over here where you'll find several treasure chests to loot. And here we can get the Pelt Flare daggers and the Thieves gaiters and a bunch of gems and some fish. We'll take a closer look at these in a moment. And after you've looted these chests, don't forget to turn around because right on this wooden box here is the Ring of Cooling. But now we can exit through this door back into the hidden village. So now we have the Pelt Flayer Daggers. These are very good weapons early on for a thief. However, I'm going to show you even better daggers in a moment that you can still get very, very early on in the game. We also got the Thieves Gaiters as well, and they match our chest piece, which is the Rampart Breaker chest piece. They're also extremely lightweight for the damage resistance they give you, and they have even more resistance to dehabilitation. The Ring of Cooling grants power to the wearer whose spirit resonates resonates with its magic, reducing the damage taken from fire attacks. And now we'll be getting the wolf headpiece. So to get this, you want to start from the city of Vernworth once again. And this time we're going to go out of the northwest gate just over here. We're going to continue northwards up this path and just carry on following it through the valley here. And eventually you'll be able to veer off to the right here to the north towards this lake. And right here, you'll be able to find the marshland settlement located here on the map. You can see the lake right here. It's pretty hard to miss. And then the settlement is located just over here. So just jump on down over here and you'll see a well. Now in the middle of the village well, there's actually a secret ring of repellency which prevents the wearer's tarred value from accumulating. Now from this well, you want to come into this house just here, but the door is actually locked. Now I actually had to swap to an archer vocation to open this specific door because explosives didn't seem to work. But you'll see if you come around the back that there is a lock on the door. And if you're playing an archer, you can actually aim at it and then let go and that's going to unlock the door. You can then come back around to this front door and go on inside. You'll find some gold inside, but just down this ladder here, you'll be able to get to the basement. You'll find some boxes in the cellar which you can smash down. And just to the right hand side in this box, you'll find the Howling Hood. But most importantly, through these boxes, you will find 12,000 gold just here. So from the village world, come past this little fire lantern. And in this house right here, you'll find a silver rapier. Now the Howling Helmet completes our look. While it's not the best thief helmet in the game, it definitely does the job until later. And the 8% resistance to sleep is really useful in certain fights. So now we've done that, we're going to come back to the city of Vernwood and it's time to massively upgrade our weaponry and also get one of the rings we need for our thief build. So to do that, we're going to come back to the city and we're going to come here to the Northwest Gate. And right here at this gate, you're going to find the West Fernworth Oxcart Station. Now, when you get here, if the Oxcart isn't here, just come to this little post with the bell and then press hold to await the ox car, and it will just speed forward time until it arrives. And then you can talk to this gentleman just here and pay him 200 gold, jump into the back of the ox car, sit down, and then off we go. And soon you will arrive at this town. So this has taken us all the way from the city of Vernworth to the west over here to the checkpoint rest town. So you're going to arrive over the bridge on this ox cart just here. And the first guy you're going to speak to is this merchant near the village well. He's going to ask you to find a unique gemstone that was taken from him. So to do that, you need to come down the pathway here, past the weapon store. And just to your right, you'll then meet this character here who you can talk to. And it turns out that this character, Everad, is looking for the exact same gemstone. So from where you meet him, if you just carry on and go right down this pathway, you'll actually find the Jedi orb sitting right here. It's called Ibrahim's Scrap Store, just here on the map of town. So if we actually talk to this character, the Jedi orb from him, it's going to cost you 7,500 gold, but it is definitely worth it for this ring we're about to buy. But before you give it to one of those characters, we're going to request a forgery of the item, the Jedi orb, which will cost us 2,000 gold. So now while he's duplicating it, we can come down the alleyway here and you can either wait two days at the inn, head back to the scrap salesman and talk to him again and you'll now have the option to ask him about the forgery. And you'll now receive another Jadeite Ore. 
Now, if you come away from the shop and we go back down this path to the gentleman who f asks us for it, so how goes it? We can then give him either the forgery or the genuine one. Let's give him the genuine one. He'll then say he's going to verify the orb's authenticity, but then he's going to go to the guy who made the counterfeit. So he'll then give you 12,000 gold and the ring of skullduggery. It's imbued with power that increases damage dealt when attacking foes from behind. This is very useful on a thief because you can easily dodge behind enemies and backstab them repeatedly. Now if we go back to the town centre where the well is, we can speak to this other merchant just over here and give him the forgery. Here's the forgery. He'll then run away with the gem and give you 3000 gold and an elite camping kit. So when you reach a campsite with the elite camping gear, you can see the campsite looks a lot more fortified with a proper cooking area, deck chairs to sit on, and even a hammock to sleep on. Beyond that, the campsite has a less likely chance to be attacked and it's easier to defend, but it can still happen like just here. Next, we're gonna be grabbing the best daggers you can get early on. They deal hybrid magic and physical damage. Now, if you guys are looking for some real armor, I've just released our embroidered vocation t-shirt, which you can grab from the link below. Each symbol is fully sewn into the clothing, so it has this 3D look to it. I'm actually wearing it right now, you can see. Funnily enough, the thief one is invisible because of the green screen. Stealth 100. So from the checkpoint rest town, which we just unlocked, we're gonna go northeast out of town, and then we're gonna continuously go north all the way down this path here and we're and we're basically heading to the Windworn Gully Cave. But let me show you how to get there step by step because it can be a little bit confusing. So to get this sword, we're going to head out of the town across the bridge and then we're going to head northwards. Use the minimap to direct yourself. Carry on heading north down into this canyon here. So as you make your way down this valley, you eventually come to this broken bridge, which you can climb up. Hop across this bridge until you get to the other side and then you'll be able to come to the right here along this rocky outcrop. This will allow you to jump to the other side across this canyon. And now if you work your way up the rocks on the left here, you can reach the very top of the cliffs. Here we are, and this is the hidden little cave to the right hand side of where we need to go, the wind worn gully. And this is where we can find a secret dagger. But there are some rock lizards in here, so do take care. If you run past them, straight over to this chest. It's actually possible to grab it without ever getting hit. And then you can just run away from all of these enemies. If you actually take your pawns with you, they'll act as cannon fodder. You can even use your formless feint ability so they can't target you or hit you. You can just run back out the cave and you're completely safe. And we have now got the bolts from the blue. These are the best daggers in the entire game until a lot later on. And in fact, they're still situationally useful because they come pre-enchanted with the shock damage effect, which gives you plus 10% shock shock damage. They're also very, very cool looking and deal a lot of strength damage and magical damage. We also picked up the elite camping kit. And also from the center of town, if you want to get a upgrade for your helmet, which is your worst piece of gear right now, head straight on and then come into this store just on the left here. Talk to this lady, and here you can get the Falconian Beak. This is exclusive to thieves. It costs 14,400 gold, and it is the best helmet you can get early on in the game until quite a while later. Now, if you come back to the city of Vernworth and you go to the Merchant's Quarter, specifically the Armory or the Smithery just here, you can actually go ahead and upgrade your weaponry. Now, with the bolts from the blue, upgrading it with the Vermedian style increases the physical damage. Whereas if you go to the elven realm and do it with the elven style, it will increase the magical damage. Personally, I think a hybrid damage works best though. I would also recommend upgrading your armor set with the Vermeerdian style as well. Next, let's go over the best thieve skills. Next, we have Helm Splitter and the upgraded version, Skull Splitter. You jump into the air and spin, dealing massive damage, and it can be used to hit bosses' weak spots or even flying enemies. Secondly, we have Formless Faint for dodging everything in the game and just becoming immune to damage completely. Thirdly, Blades of the Pyre is good as long as you use it after Formless Faint is activated. Then once you unlock Smoke Screen, which upgrades into Smoke Shroud, I'd actually use that instead. This skill makes you almost invisible to enemies and it increases your critical hit chance. And that also stacks with the Backstab Ring we get for a massive backstab critical hit. The fourth slot is really up to you. Personally, I use Concussive 
step which upgrades into Concussive Leap, which is incredible for navigating around and letting you plant bombs that detonate as you jump, allowing you to get to hidden places. But if you're fighting bosses, Gut and Run, which upgrades into Draw and Quarter, is a really powerful skill. It deals massive damage to the boss's weak spots and absolutely obliterates them. Cutting Wind is also a good option just for traveling around. Now in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you all of the endgame thief gear that you can get in the game. You can check out that video linked over here or in the description below. But please do drop a like on this one if you found it helpful.